our fourth speaker, Ron Turntine, The Rise and Fall of a 12-Year-Old Surfer. The Rise and Fall of a 12-Year-Old Surfer, Ron Turntine. By a show of hands, how many of you have ever done something to your best friend that made them just want to kill you? Anyone? Oh, wow. <laughs> well, me too. The incident that I happen to be thinking of happened when I was just 12 years old. And while I was on the dream vacation of my youth, and one that I thought just might be my last, <laughs> Mr. Contest Master, fellow Toastmasters, and anyone who's ever seen their life flash before their best friend's eyes. I invite you to come with me in the Wayback Machine. Come on, way on back to 1975. Uh, this was a very influential year in my young life. I was getting ready to start the seventh grade. Muhammad Ali fought Joe Frazier in the Thrill in Manila. And Pet Rocks, do you remember those? Oh, they were all the rage. And the Captain and Tennille had a hit song, and love will keep us together. <laughs> but in spite of everything that was going on in the world around me back in 1975, the only thing that mattered to this scrawny little 12-year-old kid is that my family was taking me on vacation to Hawaii. Yes! Man, was I excited. And to make things even cooler, as if it were possible, my dad tells me that my best friend Terry can come along and that we can take surfing lessons on the beach in Waikiki. I couldn't believe it. My best friend and me surfing together in Hawaii. I was finally going to be cool. <laughs> well, on the long plane ride over, I fell asleep and I dreamed. I dreamed that I was Greg Brady. <laughs> I was surrounded by a sea of bikini-clad foxes. <laughs> and then I was rudely awakened as my plane touched down in Honolulu. But that was okay. Because Aloha Hawaii, Ron has arrived. <coughs> well, after we got checked into the hotel, my dad took Terry and me down to the beach, and he introduced us to our surfing instructor, Duke. Now, Duke was this cool Hawaiian guy who had a little surfboard real shack on the beach. And besides teaching me and Terry how to surf, he also taught us this cool new hand gesture called shaka. He said that it meant hang loose in Hawaii. All the surfers, they use it, brother. Shaka. <laughs> and from that moment on, Terry and I surfed every single day. We would paddle our surfboards out to the breakers and ride the waves back in, smiling coolly at the ladies. <laughs> we were certain that all their conversations were about our youthful good looks and macho surfing prowess. Shaka. <laughs> Life was good, brother. And then, disaster. My dad decided that he was going to take us to the movies at the theater next door. Now, normally, this would have been fine. However, back in 1975, there was a new film that was taking the world by storm. It was called Jaws. <laughs> well, we saw the movie, and as they said back in 1975, it freaked me out, man. <laughs> I totally. Suddenly, surfing wasn't all that cool. <laughs> I was going to have to find other ways to occupy my time on vacation. There was always that Pong video game in the hotel lobby. <laughs> Jaws had devoured my shaka like enthusiasm. Well, the very next day, Terry and I were down on the beach playing, and like all best friends do, <laughs> he was teasing me about being afraid to go back to the ocean. He even tried pushing me in, which I was having no part of. So, to distract him, I got him into a little towel snapping fight. <laughs> now, I had heard that if you take the frayed end of your beach towel and dip it into the salt water, <laughs> that it really stings when it connects. <laughs> so, being the boy genius that I was, I decided to give this a little try. Well, we ran up and down the beach snapping our towels when suddenly Terry lets out a blood curdling scream, and I froze. On the inside of his leg, right below his swimming trunks, there was an inch-long bloody gash. Terry's face turned red with rage, and I gulped. Then, like a white volcano suddenly erupting, Terry lights out this incredible Hulk roar, lunges for me, 
Sorry, brother, the chase was on. <laughs> I ran back up the beach towards the hotel with Terry hot on my heels. I cut a path to the swimming pool area where Terry quickly followed. I then darted into the hotel and headed straight for the lobby. The familiar strains of love will keep us together <laughs> echoed over the loudspeakers. <laughs> the group of newly arriving tourists and ladies watched as Terry and I <laughs> stormed past him. I then ran through the gift shop, turned the corner, and found myself right back out on the beach in Duke's surfboard shack at a dead end. I backed up slowly against a stack of surfboards, and Terry eased forward. Then I looked beyond my best friend, and I saw a seven-foot-tall great white shark with bloody teeth walking up behind him. <laughs> it raised a friend and tapped him on the shoulder. <laughs> Terry turned around, <laughs> and then, for the second time that day, my best friend screamed, <laughs> and so did I. He then stumbled backwards, ran into me, and we knocked over that stack of surfboards. I stood up and dusted the sand off myself and noticed that I now, too, had a cut on my leg. <laughs> Karma. That's when Duke took the head off of his shark costume. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> I wear this to advertise the new shark movie next door. Five bucks an hour, brother. <laughs> well, Terry never teased me about Jaws again. I never snapped him with a towel again, either. Well, we ended up having a great vacation. We really did, and in spite of my Jaws-induced trauma. And although I was never able to fulfill my Greg Brady surfing fantasy, that's OK, because Terry and I were still best friends. <laughs> oh, and the best part? I got to start the seventh grade that year with a wardrobe full of new Hawaiian shirts and one puka shell necklace. Oh, <laughs> trust me. Back in 1975, that was way cool, brother. Shaka! <laughs>